about a year ago I got myself one of these hot plates. I have to say it's a lot of fun building boards with this type of soldering. It extends your natural abilities to solder really tiny things and it makes smaller packages possible to work with. The only problem is that I would control the temp by hand using an old light dimmer switch. Not only was it difficult to control, but also mains voltage was exposed, so I thought it might be nice to move on from my sketchy ways and build a controller for it. Starting with the schematic, I used an ESP32 that I had from other projects. Here we have a couple of decoupling capacitors and the RC circuit for the EN pin. I used a separate board to automatically pull the EN and IO0 pins while programming the board. Next up we got the 3.3 volt rail, pretty simple, just a couple of capacitors and then an LED. This header is to the other board where the AC to DC converter is located. It also has the solid state relay to run the hot plate. This middle pin is what turns that on and off. Next up is the header for the plate temperature sensor. It is a 10K thermistor. I found that around 2K2 was a good voltage divider resistor value. Next up is the rotary and quarter section of the schematic. I'll try to make a video just about this because it works pretty well. In the meantime, you can see how I set it up. Last but not least, I have the ILA 9341. You can see what IO I have everything else set up for, so just, just pause and look at it. Uh, do you see the problem yet? Yeah, you will. Here's a schematic for the other board. So I have 120 volts AC coming in. I have some transient protection with a MOV and the fuse. Basically, if the voltage ever got high enough, the MOV will become low resistance and it will essentially short the mains, which will blow the fuse. Make sure to have the MOV after the fuse or else you're relying on the breaker to pop, which is not as fast as the fuse. And this will cause damage if you did that. I have one of those AC to DC converters here and then the capacitors help smooth out, smooth out the 5 volt rail. I then have a solid state relay that will turn on and off to control the hot plate temp. I'm actually using an Omron G3MB202P. I included a flyback diode in case I ever decided to use a mechanical relay for something else in the future, but who knows. Here's the layout for the main board. My first design was kind of a goofy shape and laid out really poorly. Also, it cost like 35 bucks before shipping. Not sure why the engineering fee came into play, but I suspect it's because it was a four layer board uh, that exceeded some sort of size limit. Um, and because I really am that cheap, I decided to start over. I ditched a four layer board. I was using, uh, because I'm using a W room module, it's just not necessary. There's no controlled impedances or anything with this. Um, so not really a whole lot to this. I tried to keep as much on the top side of the board because this is a two layer board. I didn't want to disturb the ground plane on the bottom any more than I needed to. That's really about it. Then here's the 3D model for the front. As you can see, I tried to make it as small as possible with the screen and the rotor encoder. And then the components are on the other side. So technically this is the back. And then here is the front where all the components are and it's pretty wide open. Here is the layout for the high voltage board. I tried to keep the high voltage as far away as possible from anything else. I do get a little close with the diode, but uh, this device will only be used when someone is sitting in front of it and operating it. It's not 24 seven unattended, so I'm not too worried about fire safety stuff here. I mean, I am concerned, but not too worried about it. Uh, if something happens, the user is right there in front of it. Uh, you would ne you're never gonna leave this thing unattended and powered up just doesn't make any sense. Um, so uh, the user is right in front of it. If anything happens, they can address whatever's happening. And uh, having said that, 120 volts is deadly. So be careful uh, if you choose to do something like this or similar to this and it burns your house down or you get electrocuted or whatever. Uh, it's not my fault. I take zero responsibility for that. And lastly, here we have the 3D model for the high voltage uh, board. Um, these 3D models are actually really sweet. You can get them into Fusion 360 and you can use that to uh, design cases and different things like that, which is really nice. That's something that I really like about KiCad. 
And then here is a picture of the um, the Fusion 360 model that I made for this. Um, not a whole lot going on here. Um, there is the base is split up into two separate um, pieces. Uh, I did that because the face is really difficult to print at 30 degrees. Uh, it's a 30 degree angle. So to print that was really tough. Uh, so I just split it up into two and that made it a little easier to print. Makes it really not a great final product, uh, but it works really well. Uh, and then I use nylon spacers for um, uh, those little hex deals that hold it above uh, the 3D printed enclosure. Um, again, using the KiCad exports was really handy here.